everybody, it's Clarence from Street Builds. I'm here at Delt with the Brunlets and family. We're gonna go riding. What are we gonna see? We're gonna see some bike parking. We're gonna see some intersections. We're gonna see some cycle tracks. We're gonna see some car-free street. Delft is a cool little city. You've seen Utrecht, you've seen Amsterdam, you've seen Groningen. Now you're gonna see perhaps the best. And now, <laughs> what's, so, what's so different about here, about riding? I mean, we bike all over the city without ever putting our foot down half the time. And uh, one of the great things we're gonna actually experience what it's like to ride with our son on his bike ride home from school. And then we're also going to catch up with our daughter who is going to ride herself home because she's a teenager and that's what teenagers do. Let's go pick him up. Awesome. <laughs> this is uh, Etienne's Dutch public school. It's where he's been going since we moved here. And it's our way of having him be fully immersed in the school program and, and learning Dutch. We were very fortunate to live in a city that had a lot of opportunities for kids to walk to school together, but biking wasn't really something that they did independently. But here, uh, since moving, Etienne is now cycling to and from school on his own. And we see kids doing that as young as eight or nine. They're able to bike on their own. And it's part of the culture here of building that freedom and independence and a lot of that is afforded because they've created such a safe space for them to cycle. I feel like if other cities had what the Netherlands have, it would be a much safer place for children. We anticipated when we moved here back in February that the kids were going to have free reign of Delft and, and it, but it still really struck us how quickly that happened. Within a week or two uh, Etienne was cycling not just in and around Delft, but to some of the neighboring cities as well. And the two of them will cycle there or they'll take the tram. The intersection directly behind me is uh, Delft's plane. Uh, initially, they were uh, four and six lane roads. And the intersection has been transformed into a, a roundabout that increased the capacity of those two streets. Each of those streets are now just one lane of cars in each direction. Uh, they have a bus or a tramway down the center. The priority is given solely to people on bike and on foot. Uh, so there's little shark's teeth telling the cars they have to stop and wait and it's uh, pretty amazing to be able to cycle through here continuously. We've done a few loop-to-loops -loops ourselves <laughs> making cars stop. Um, and all it means is that uh, the safety and priority is given to the most vulnerable road users. If a car is going through and then there's a bike or a pedestrian about to cross the road, the car has to stop and wait instead of there being a traffic light. It feels really nice so I don't have to wait. Uh, right now we're standing in front of Abstaudebrug. So the bridge is 100% car free, only ha has people traveling a motorized scooter, bike or foot, and sees 20,000 trips per day. So that's uh, pretty astounding for a city of just 100,000 people. The first things we noticed uh, walking and cycling around Delft is how few stop signs and traffic lights there are in the city. And I think that's a result of so much of the traffic here being human scale and human powered. When 80% of all trips in the city are made on foot or bicycle. Uh, as you can see with the intersection here, people are just left to their own devices and negotiate the intersection through eye contact, through hand gestures, through subtle little cues to each other about which direction they happen to be going. Seeing where the wheels are turning, where they plan on going, assuming where they're going. If they're looking at me, like saying, go, or I'd say go. It's all about communication. So we are on the uh, the TU Delft campus, the Technical University of Delft, where there's about 20,000 students and uh, 10,000 faculty living and, and working and studying here. Uh, this main stretch here is uh, Melkweg, which was built in 1969 and was initially a four-lane arterial road. They've taken the what was four lanes of traffic and made it into an exclusive bus and tramway. The rest has been turned into a linear park, uh, and then there's a nice four-meter wide cycle track. So this is a really uh, interesting little intersection that they put in on the TU Delft campus. They've actually had to add a traffic light because of the number of cyclists that are traveling through this particular cycle path. The light will stay green for the cyclists all the time and for pedestrians uh, crossing the street. If a car wants to cross the cycle track or the footpath, uh, they actually need to trigger a sensor in the street which will turn the light red for cyclists and turn the light green for cars, but only for about 10 or 15 seconds. So it's kind of a complete reversal of, of what we're used to seeing elsewhere in the world where the light will stay green for the cars and the, the, the pedestrians and cyclists have to uh, ask permission to cross the street. When we've traveled here on our own, we noticed instantly how many uh, teenagers ride around. And I remember thinking to myself, even though at the time Coralie was only 10, like, wouldn't it be great if she could grow up in a place where it was normal for her to bike around with her friends? And so now that's what she does. We were talking about how I felt more free here, that I could do anything without people staring at me. 
I could ride from one city to the other on my own. There's not that many cars, it's very quiet, and the basically the only sound you hear is ringing of bells and people talking. It's been probably about 20 or 30 year process of uh, taking all the cars out of the city centre uh, that's taken basically one street at a time and one square at a time the city has removed cars so now most of the, the city centre is now car free it can be accessed for freight and delivery service vehicles uh, during certain hours of the day it's a pretty pleasant place to to walk and cycle and, and we spend plenty of time in there as a family